The EV push is finally over. Biden just ditched EVs as he had no choice but to stop forcing his green ideology. The common man and car makers have had enough and the government has finally lost the EV battle. That's right, Biden is putting a pause to the EV madness and bringing back the glory days of gas cars. EVs are rotting in dealer lots while gas cars are selling like crazy. But why exactly did Biden switch his plans? Why are people going against EVs? Are EVs a scam? It all started when Joe Biden started forcing all car makers to make more EVs, whether they liked it or not. In fact, he even went on to impose a $14 billion fine on companies if they didn't sell enough EVs. But now he's rushing and making a giant U-turn as the public finally won the EV battle. The plan was pretty bold, jack up the EV market share to a whopping 67% by 2032, up from less than 8% in 2023. That sounds like a massive leap, right? But here's where the drama kicks in. The big wigs in Detroit like GM, Ford, and Stellantis started sweating bullets over this. They're looking at their truck-heavy fleets and thinking, how the heck are we gonna electrify all of these in time? They're worried about the colossal investments and the ticking clock. Stellantis' CEO even said that the EV push is purely dogmatic. He's worried about EV makers running out of rare earth minerals like nickel and lithium, which are required to make EV batteries. As the supplies dwindle, the future prices of EVs are only going to go upwards, and he thinks companies are just trying to sell a pipe dream to sell you EVs. Then we have GM CEO Mary Barra, who's on the verge of losing her company due to not being able to sell her EVs. Ford, too, is seeing a loss of $4 billion and is selling every car at a $36,000 loss. To make things worse, a new consumer report also leaked, talking about some major areas where EVs will probably never be as good as gas cars, but more on that later. And it's not just the companies feeling the heat. The UAW, or United Auto Workers Union, with all its muscle, started raising eyebrows too. Initially, they were on board with Biden's green dream, but then reality hit. They started worrying about job security given that EVs generally need fewer hands to be put together. Suddenly, the union's support for Biden's re-election looked a bit shaky, especially with Michigan hanging in the balance as a key battleground state. Enter Elon Musk and Tesla, the EV poster child. They're over there waving the green flag even harder, pushing for stricter regulations and an even faster shift to electric. Meanwhile, the traditional automakers are sending an SOS signal to the administration, pleading for some slack in the regulations. The Biden administration, sensing the mounting pressure from all sides, seems to be easing off the gas pedal on the EV push. So what's the new plan? Give automakers more time, with the big EV sales jump not required until after 2030. It's like they're saying, let's slow down and make sure everyone can keep up. Why the sudden change of heart, you ask? Well, it's like a stew with a bunch of different ingredients. First off, President Biden's trying to juggle fighting climate change while also keeping the auto industry and labor unions in his corner. And let's not forget, he's got his eye on re-election and he needs all the support he can get. Then there's the whole consumer demand thing. Turns out, not everyone's jumping on the EV bandwagon as quickly as hoped. People are balking at the high prices and the hunt for a charging station can feel like looking for a needle in a haystack. Some people even started abandoning their brand new EVs or exchanging them for gas cars instead. Ford and GM have a stock supply over three months sitting in dealer lots. The condition is so bad that Ford had to completely shut down production of their flagship EV pickup, the F-150 Lightning, because the demand just wasn't there. Even GM scrapped a $40 billion deal with Honda to make cheaper EVs, and their CEO Mary Barra said in an interview that they are delaying production and wouldn't be able to make cheaper EVs anytime soon. This led to a huge fallout, but people still kept buying from one brand, Tesla. Tesla, being an EV-only company, has seen good EV sales numbers. But last month, China betrayed Tesla and ended up costing them a whopping $80 billion. But before I talk about that, let me tell you what exactly is going to happen with the car market. Right now, companies are slowly going back to gas cars. And since we have better technology than before, you'll see gas cars with improved mileage and prices lower than ever. This year is going to be one of the best years to buy a gas guzzler. Folks who have already purchased an EV are running scared because all this negative press is causing EVs to lose value faster than ever. Tesla themselves confirmed that their Model X will lose about $21,000 worth of value in just a single year of use, and as the time goes by, the batteries will also degrade, increasing your range anxiety. But how exactly did people in the automakers convince Biden to stop selling gas cars? 
First up, the dealers, well, 4,000 of them in fact, sent a thrashing letter to Biden saying that EVs are not selling, so either lower the prices or stop forcing people to buy them. Despite this, Biden just didn't seem to care. Then dealers just simply refused to sell them. And bam, the car market crash began. First off, let's talk numbers. About half of Ford's dealers decide to opt out of selling EVs next year. They're like, no thanks, we'll pass on the extra EV training and the fancy equipment. Ford's trying to play it cool, saying 90% of folks will still live close to a dealer selling their EVs. But let's be real, it's a bit of a yikes moment for them. This whole situation has been like a roller coaster. Last year, around 65% of Ford's dealers were on board with this EV push, ready to drop at least 500,000 on getting all geared up. But then, the EV hype train started losing steam, and now we're down to about 1,500 dealers still in the game. But that's a big drop, my friends. Ford's saying it's all good, that their dealers know their local market's best. But deep down, you gotta wonder if they're sweating a little, right? It's not every day half your sellers decide to sit out on what's supposed to be the next big thing. But wait, there's more. It's not just Ford in this EV soap opera. A recent Sierra Club report threw some serious shade, revealing two-thirds of US car dealers don't even have EVs to sell. And get this, 45% of them wouldn't sell EVs even if they could. Buick's dealer network basically got cut in half because loads of them didn't want to jump on the EV train. Buick's like, go big on EVs or go home, and nearly half of them chose to go home. That's some serious drama right there. And then there's the whole deal with dealers needing to fork out big bucks for EV chargers and training. Some are just not feeling the investment, especially if EVs aren't flying off the lot. But here's the kicker. Some states won't even let manufacturers sell EVs directly to you and me. So if the dealers don't want to sell EVs and the car makers can't sell them directly, what's a car buyer to do? Even Tesla sales are tanking because Elon Musk thinks the Chinese company BYD is tough to beat. His little statement alone caused investors to lose a lot of confidence, and it ended up tanking their shares by $80 billion in a week. In their biggest market, China, Tesla is constantly getting dusted by BYD in the past three quarters. They've even had to drop their prices three times in a month just to stay competitive in such a fierce market. The US government even tried to lure people in with a $7,500 tax credit, but nothing seemed to work. The Consumer Report made it all worse, highlighting that EVs have 80% more reliability issues compared to gas cars. First up, EVs catching fire. Now this sounds like something straight out of a Michael Bay movie, but it's a real concern. While EV fires are less common than those in gasoline cars, when they do happen, they're quite a spectacle. These lithium-ion batteries powering these rides are like packed lunchboxes of energy, and if they're damaged or faulty, they can go from zero to inferno real quick. These fires can be tough to put out too, needing tons of water and a lot of time, making them a real headache for firefighters and owners alike. While some may argue that gas cars catch fire too, EV fires are much worse, taking nearly 27 times more water just to extinguish them. Tesla and GM's EVs have even gone out of control and killed pedestrians while they were in the autopilot mode, so there's still a long way to go. Then there's the case of the mysterious panel gaps. Imagine dropping a bunch of cash on a shiny new EV, only to find it looks like it was assembled during an earthquake. These gaps aren't just an eyesore, they're a sign of quality control taking a back seat. They can lead to annoying wind noise on the highway, making your silent EV not so silent after all. It's like paying for a symphony and getting a high school band. Software bugs are another gremlin in the EV machine. These cars are basically supercomputers on wheels, relying heavily on software for everything from driving assist to controlling the temperature. But with great power comes great responsibility, and some automakers seem to be skipping their homework. Owners have reported screens freezing, features playing hide and seek, and even cars acting like stubborn mules refusing to move. It's like your car's got an attitude and decided to take the day off. Poor quality parts are the cherry on top of this not-so-sweet cake. From flimsy trim that waves goodbye at the first bump, to door handles that decide they're not too into opening doors anymore, it's a mixed bag of surprises. And let's not forget the charging issues, where EV owners sometimes find themselves playing musical chairs with charging stations that just won't cooperate. Despite all the incentives and the push from up top, people weren't lining up to swap their trusty gas-fueled companions for these high-tech electric marvels. And it's not just about the sticker shock, it's about practicality, convenience, and making sure the switch makes sense for our daily lives. Automakers, feeling the heat from dwindling demand and the logistical labyrinth of rolling out EVs en masse, started singing a similar tune. 
Even the big shots like Ford and Tesla had to reassess their electric ambitions, grappling with the reality that maybe, just maybe, they'd jumped the gun on how quickly everyone would jump on board the EV train. So the administration's plan to ease into the EV future is like a plot twist nobody saw coming. It's like they're saying, let's not rush into this electric dream, let's take our time and make sure everyone's on board. Biden finally gave in to pressure and the common man's cries have finally been heard. Despite all the drama, the folks in charge are still optimistic. They believe that with a bit more time, new tech and better infrastructure, the public might warm up to EVs. And who knows, by giving the auto industry a bit more leeway, it might just be the strategy that keeps the EV dream alive, especially with Trump lurking in the background, ready to hit the reverse button on climate policies. The EV hype is finally over, and the market just snapped back to reality. It's high time that the government and car makers start listening to what people want, or else the result will only be huge market crashes and companies shutting their doors. What do you think? Have we been lied to about EVs? Yes or no?